Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, this is the JPC 12. Well, this isn't. This is the carry bag that it comes in, which, in my opinion, is quite a nice touch. Inside, we find all the components to build a ground plane vertical antenna that can be tuned for use between 7 MHz and 50 MHz. Maximum power rating for this antenna is 100 watts SSB. So let's take a closer look at what's included. So first up is a color printed manual, which appears to cover the JPC-12 and another antenna on the other side of the manual. Specs and building instructions are cleanly written, with an odd word here and there that hasn't been translated as well as it could have been. Now as this antenna is a ground mounted vertical, it does require some ground radials. Now I've seen ribbon cables supplied before on another antenna, and to be honest, it's actually quite a good idea. Maybe not the best quality, but it's a good use of ribbon cable. Now I will try and separate some of these strands when we take this antenna outside. This is the ground spike, which pushes into the ground to support the main antenna. It also acts as a path to ground. According to the specs, there is no electroplating on this ground spike, which was done on purpose to hopefully provide good grounding. Now personally, I think copper plated would have been better, but what do you think? Also included is a telescopic whip. Now this measures 2.5 meters when fully extended. You would have noticed the threads on most of these parts. Well, that's because they all screw into each other, which I'll show you shortly. Also supplied are four aluminum tubes, each around 32 centimeters long. Each of them screw into each other, which forms the lower part of the antenna. Next, we have the aluminum base, which mounts at the bottom of the antenna. On the lower end, the ground spike is connected, and on the top is where we attach the black aluminum tubes. You'll also notice an SO239 socket, which is where you connect your 50 ohm coax feeder, which then goes off to your radio. Now, I must admit, I'm pretty impressed with the quality of this part. The lower half is kind of textured, with the top half having a carbon fiber look. With the weight of all the antenna parts that sit on top of this, it's important to have a good solid build, which upon first inspection looks like it ticks all the boxes. And the last component is what the manual calls a multi band inductive coil. And this is made from nylon in a mold, apparently. To tune the antenna, you simply move the slider up or down the coil. Now, this is a tension part, so it kind of clicks as you move it, plus, it stays firmly in place once set. And the manual provides some brief information about how long the telescopic antenna should be, or whether you use the coil, or whether you use the lower extension poles or not, depending on which band you want to use. So let's head outside and set it up. So the carry case it comes in is pretty awesome as it keeps all the parts nice and neat together. So there's no excuse if you lose any parts. Now I could have done this inside, but I'm going to split the ribbon cable into four sections are still terminated together at the other end though. Now we'll take the ground spike, the radials and the aluminium connection block and attach them together like this. Now this will allow me to push the spike into the ground easily using the block as a bit of a weight. I'm not entirely sure if there's an optimum distance at how far you push it into the ground, but this is how far I've pushed it in. Next we'll attach the four aluminium tubes to the bottom block one at a time. Now, as mentioned before, the machining is done really well, so they do fit together without any snags. On the top of these four tubes, we'll then attach the coil. As you can see, so far, this is really easy to put together, and the parts have been machined so well, there's no issues with these parts screwing into each other. Lastly, we need to attach the telescopic whip. Now the documentation does detail how many sections to pull out depending on what band you're using, but I think some of the words have been lost in translation, so it's going to be the case of using your antenna analyzer while setting it up for your desired frequency. Now before we do that, I need to spread out the ground radials. As you can see here, I have them in a cross configuration. I guess if you wanted to, you could potentially separate every wire on the ribbon cable and have more spread around the base. The first band I wanted to test was 20 meters, so 14 megahertz. Now I did use my VNA, but its screen doesn't like the sun. 
and it's hard to show the results, but I did get a good match from using the VNA indoors connected to my computer. To get the antenna to 14 MHz, I lowered the bottom section of the telescopic whip and then pushed the spring loaded connection up to close where the upper red marker is on the coil. Now back in the shack and it appears that tuning doesn't really need any alteration. With a wide span you can see the resonant point is just below 14 MHz. However, across the whole of the 20 meter band, the SWR is 1.3 or lower, so perfectly usable. Uh, Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey. Good afternoon, my friend. My name is Janos, like Juliet, Alpha November, Oscar Sierra. Uh, your signal report is 5 by 9 in middle side of Hungary, 60 km from Budapest. I give the mic back to you, mic zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey, this is Hotel Alpha 4, Hotel Alpha. Yeah, Hotel Alpha 4, Hotel Alpha, this is Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey, very good afternoon, nice to work you. Uh, the name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango Tango, the name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango Tango, and about 15 miles north west of London in the United Kingdom. Today we've got around 30 degrees Celsius today, so it's very, very warm here in the UK. Okay. Anyway, microphone back to you from M0 DQW. M0 DQW, this is HA4 HA. Thank you, Matt, for the information. By us, it's the uh, same like weather by uh, yours. It's uh, sunny and uh, 28 degrees Celsius. Uh, my working condition is in Jesu FC710 with 100 watts output. And my antenna is in a vertical antenna with a multiband from a diamond uh, CP6. Mike, back to you. Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey. This is Hotel Alpha 4, Hotel Alpha. At the time of making this video, 20 meters was not exactly popping. And while I was able to make a couple of contacts, I thought it would be interesting to try Whisper for a few transmissions. With the radio RF power set to 5%, which we can assume is around 5 watts, I loaded up WSJTX, configured it for WSPR and let it transmit for a few cycles. Now, considering the band appeared to be quite flat, I was surprised as how far my WSPR transmissions were being heard using this JPC-12 antenna. We can see I was being received on the east coast of the USA, also right up into Iceland, and then a few reports from Australia and New Zealand. Now I can't even put this down to conditions, as 20 meter voice was pretty weak, but I guess from the design of this antenna, it most likely has a low angle of radiation, helping the signal to go further around the world. Now I'll definitely be trying this antenna on 20 meters again when conditions improve. Maybe it's a good DX performer. Later in the evening, I retune the antenna to 40 meters by fully extending the bottom section and then dropping it around 10 centimeters. I then move the slider on the coil towards the bottom, very close to that bottom red marker. Now back in the shack to test the SWR and it appeared to be very good across the entire band, around 1.6 or lower. Now while testing on receive, I switched between my NFID half wave, but to be honest, there was not really that much in it, which I was actually quite surprised about, especially on 40 meters. Half wave antenna. It's halfway on 80 meters to the 49 to 1 transformer. So I use it for about 82 to 10 meters. It's the amplifier and the rig is an IC7610 by ICOM. Uh, the antenna is uh, rigid V-dipole and in uh, 20 and 40 is a dual band uh, V-dipole. 60 meter wide, aluminium made. Uh, on a V-shape, of course. Um, so, uh, thanks for the contact, Jeremy. I wish you to enjoy the rest of the evening and hope to catch you very soon again. Echo Italy 7, Hotel Radio Bravo, IK2 Sierra Oscar Bravo. Arrivederci, bye-bye. I also performed a very quick 40-meter whisper test, and these are the results of just a few transmission cycles. Now, as 40 meters is normally quite good for local communications in the evening, I was surprised to get a hit down in Australia. Remember, I only had this running for around 20 minutes and normally these are left on for a good 24 hours to get a better understanding of how well an antenna is working or testing the propagation. So to sum up my experience of using the JPC-12 portable HF antenna, I would say it's a winner. From the size of it when broken down to the supplied carry case and then on to the performance. 
Now, what's also different about this antenna is that the loading coil as such is more or less in the center of the antenna. Now, does this assist or make this antenna perform any better than an antenna that has the coil at the base? Now, not all bands will use the extension tubes or the coil, but for those of you that know the answer, please feel free to share this information in the comments below. Anyway, guys, until the next video, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.